I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. It's truly a privilege to share my perspective as a patient. But before I delve into my introduction and my personal experiences, I want to acknowledge the complexities and obstacles that you as healthcare providers, patients, lobbyists, activists, and others encounter. The evolving regulations, clinical guidelines, payer demands, financial pressures are just a few of the hurdles you face. Thank you for your dedication and hard work. So my name is Alicia and I am a wife, mother of two young children, as well as an emerging advocate. With over 23 years of experience in the fields of precision oncology, hereditary cancer, and rare diseases, I devoted several of my early years to assisting patients in securing insurance coverage for essential hereditary cancer testing. I never anticipated that my professional healthcare experiences would lead me to utilize my skills and knowledge to advocate for my own rights as a patient, striving for the healthcare I deserve and enhancing my overall quality of life. Reflecting on my journey, I realized that I, had I not stumbled on this <laughs> career path, I might not have pursued the answers as to why I never felt quite right. Throughout my life, I have been labeled. I have been labeled as obese and advised to diet and exercise regularly. The reality is that I had attempted numerous weight loss methods over 25 years only to discover what I believed was stubborn fat was in fact a disease I now know as lipedema. My upbringing has been deeply intertwined in the medical healthcare system, having undergone more than 12 surgeries throughout my lifetime. The first surgery took place when I was approximately three years old. The recollections of lying on the frigid metal operating tables, coupled with the unique scent and chill of iodine being applied to my body, continue to linger in my mind. During my adolescence, I started to sense something was amiss with my body. Growing up with a different appearance and style compared to my peers through middle school and high school had a profound effect on me. In junior high, I felt the sting of embarrassment for being larger than my classmates, especially when I had to wear gym shorts and face ridicule. By high school, I resorted to wearing excessively baggy clothing to hide my large arms, thighs, and hips. Throughout much of my life, I endured fat shaming from everyone around me, including my healthcare providers, which was both harsh and undeserved. Such labels reduce a person to a single trait, overshadowing their entire identity and actions. Labels are fundamentally damaging as they can make individuals like myself feel constrained, stereotyped, and one-dimensional. The weight of these labels took a toll on my mental well-being, and it wasn't until recently that I fully realized that impact. Throughout my life, I resided in three different states, leading me to realize that healthcare quality varies significantly. I was raised in Utah and later spent approximately a decade in Texas, where I observed notable improvements in the healthcare system. The improvement was primarily due to the presence of several large academic health systems that offered multi-specialty clinics, facilitating better coordination of care. Despite this progress, I found myself once again dedicating considerable time and effort to weight loss while undergoing numerous diagnostic procedures to try and uncover the underlying issues affecting me. Unfortunately, each new provider I consulted with seemed to offer the same dismissive assessments. I was labeled as generally healthy. My concerns were all psychological. I was labeled a hypochondriac 
and the only solution presented was to lose weight. This experience left me feeling frustrated, angry, and disheartened. I struggled to comprehend why I constantly felt unwell and why my blood test consistently indicated an inflammatory response. Following the COVID pandemic, I relocated to Arizona and began searching for new healthcare providers to address my intricate, in, intricate, excuse me, intricate medical history. Approximately three years ago, I was fortunate to find Dr. Doug Moretti and his healthcare team. During a meeting one afternoon, Dr. Moretti inquired if I had ever heard of the term lipedema before. I was taken aback and responded with a resounding no, unsure of the direction of where this discussion was going. He then presented a brochure to me from the Lipedema Foundation featuring images of legs like mine. That day marked a significant turning point in my life thanks to Dr. Moretti's expertise and commitment. He was the first healthcare provider in many years to view me as a complete and whole individual and to identify an underlying cause all without resorting to labels. I am immensely grateful to him for finally providing an answer to the question I had been asking for over 25 years, which was, what was wrong with my body? As I persist in managing my own lipedema and advocate for surgical treatment coverage with my insurance, I aspire for my voice and experiences to serve as a source of support for others. I am committed to sharing my experiences in order to support and advocate for individuals affected by this disease. My goal is to contribute to the advancement of research on the etiology of, of lipedema and other rare metabolic disorders through whole genome sequencing. Lipedema is a debilitating condition that inflicts persistent pain and restricts the mobility of those affected. To all my fellow lippy women on social media who will uh, likely see this video recording, I urge you to persevere in your struggle. Reject the stigmas associated with this condition and advocate for the treatment that you rightfully deserve. Through resilience and determination, I ultimately discovered a healthcare provider who changed my life. In closing, I would like to impart one piece of wisdom before I go, and that is be mindful of the labels you use and the impact they leave behind. <laughs>